not only for each other, but for your children, yeah. and for all of those that you come in contact with as husband and wife. So that your children, your family, and those that you do come in contact with might grow to be faithful, godly Christians in their own relationship to God. We looked at the relationship between a husband and a wife as used by God through Paul to illustrate the relationship of Christ and the church in Ephesians chapter 5, where Paul writes, Wives, be subject to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own loves pardon, he who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife. And the two shall become as one flesh. Now Paul says this mystery is great. I'm speaking of Christ in the church. But nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife even as himself. And the wife must see to it that she respects the husband. What a wonderful and beautiful thought. We talked about that we can approximate the love and the commitment God and Christ had for us for the church. When he gave himself both physically and spiritually for her, by having the same type of relationship with our spouses. You showed that you understood what God wants from his children in their marriages, spirituality, strength, consistency, loyalty, honesty, love, the realization of what a great gift from God that someone who truly loves you is. These are the things that will carry you through the years to come. And we, will be met. we talked about commitment. Commitment to God, to each other. We looked at Genesis 2 and Matthew 19, the parallel passage in Mark 10, as well as in Ephesians 5 that we've just read, where the union of a man and a woman is described as becoming one flesh. If you recall, we spent a lot of time on that concept. We looked at the relationships that we see in the scriptures of the various characters that are there, but we looked primarily at Mary and Joseph, you recall. You listed the things that you saw in those relationships that showed to you what it means to be one flesh. You wrote about being of the same mind spiritually having the same focus in life and death, having the same goal, goals, both spiritually and in this world, for your children. Then we looked over at Ruth, where Ruth says, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. 